Sure. Let's keep this PG if you have. So, uh, stream of consciousness. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I haven't been. No, you, you know how it goes. You do it to people all the time. Yeah, I'm just very shy to talk about myself. It's but okay. I'm, as, a, as a favor, you as a friend, I I'm enjoy it. I love I'm more your shy show. than anybody. This is a facade. Is it's it? a lie. It's a lie. Are we on? Yes. Hi, welcome to Rock and Talk. Today's guest is esteemed film director Emmanuel Sherney, and welcome to the show. It's Emmanuel. a pleasure to be here, Lisa. Thank you. I know you came from very far to be here today. Yes. Thank you so much. One whole block. <laughs> Emmanuel. Yes. My cue card. Uh, Emmanuel, I know that you won first prize for a best short drama at TIFF, is that correct? Toronto International Film Festival? You won a prize. Wow. You did. That's very esteemed. You're so modest. Um, you are very well researched. No. But I have to correct you. I have to correct you. Correct, correct. Um, I know I never won a prize at TIFF, but I, I, I have had my short film screen at TIFF. One okay. in 2006. Right. And in 2010, I had two short films premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival. But they were not um, winners. There was some prize. But you're always somewhere. a winner. Was it, um, there was a prize. I know there was. Um, not to sound modest, mm -hmm. um, I, there might have been in the past. But, um, you know, the prize for me is just actually making the film. It's really just kind of, uh, it's such a, uh, you know, the journey to make a film is, you know, quite exhilarating to say the least. So when I, when I finish a film, it's done, and everything else is kind of a bonus. Where it screens, whatever it wins awards, it's... It's icing on the cake, but it's right. to make the film to me is, is what the, it's what it's about. How did you get into filmmaking, Emmanuel? Oh, that's a loaded question. I mean, I don't know if I got into it so much as it kind of just took me, took me over. You know, I mean, uh, I love music, I love painting, I love all art forms, but writing and filmmaking is kind of where I sort of demonstrated some semblance of a skill, and I kept cultivating it. I mean, growing up, I remember. My father showing me really, really cool films at a very young age, and I was very lucky to grow up in a household that was consumed with art. And um, so, you know, I remember I was like maybe 11 years old, and my father sat me down and showed me Taxi Driver, and you know, Martin Scorsese just kind of opened my eyes to a whole world of filmmaking. And but filmmaking for me, out of all the other art forms, what I find beautiful about it is kind of um, it's kind of a culmination of a lot of art forms, you know. And camera movement is dance, and and lighting is painting, and so I get I get very seduced by that, you know, the power of cinema. And so many people involved, the, the, the pieces of the puzzle to put that final product together. There's a, a huge, um, and, and as, you, as the director, you have to manage a whole different, a whole bunch of people to do this and put it together. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I lament the fact that, you know, when you're struggling to make a film, you're struggling to raise money to make a film. I sometimes think, man, it would be so much easier if I just had an easel and a paintbrush and I was on some island I could paint and then... But filmmaking requires so many people to get involved, and it's, you know, once you're, you know, it begins with me and an idea in my room, and I write, and I write, and I write, and I write, and I share it with a select group of people, and then after you write it, you must kind of, for a lack of better words, sell your concept, you have to solicit money, you have to solicit interest from other people, you've got to get people involved, but it all begins with the director, you know, you bring passion, people usually gravitate towards that, you know, and you assemble a team, and then, you know, you kind of make it happen. Yes, it's you know, seductive. But you have those powers. You have those powers of convincing. You're hypnotic. <laughs> uh, tell me, who are your other, you've mentioned uh, Martin Scorsese, other directors that have influenced you? You know, the disparity between people who have influenced me is so incongruent. Like, I mean, Martin Scorsese on one hand, I mean, um, Woody Allen was a huge influence on me uh, as someone who really loves to tap into my own comedic sensibility. Um, but, you know, I mean, the list goes on. Stanley Kubrick is another filmmaker. I love the European tradition, so I loved... You know, I fell in love, I took a, a course in New German cinema when I was in film school, and I fell in love with Fassbender, Rainer Winter Fassbender, who was just such, a, just such a provocative filmmaker, but he had so many interesting things to say. And again, for me, it was, um, for someone who writes a lot of dialogue, and for someone who really loves to turn a good word, um, I really love filmmakers who just, you know, the power of, I mean, cinema began with just images. And I love the fact that Fassman, a lot of these Europeans would just kind of tell the story through the, the power of the image. So, yeah, I mean, De Sica, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many. Today, contemporary filmmakers, I would say Paul Thomas Anderson is a filmmaker who I absolutely admire. I find there's, there's an intensity to the frames that is just kind of ready to burst. Uh, I just, uh, I love it. I love it. Wow. And he has a, and he, he uses, um, lately, anyway, he's been using um, Johnny Greenwood, the guitarist of Radiohead, to do a lot of the scores for his film. So there's this incredibly sparse, guitar that is very haunting and um, yeah I, I love it and another difference I should say beyond filmmaking you know Tom Waits was probably 
uh, as a musician, as a singular artist, was a huge influence on me because I found his music was extremely uh, cinematic, extremely cinematic, and uh, it was poetry. And I just love, I love, I love the, the, I love the images that the music conveys for me. Do you see yourself personally as a storyteller or a creator, uh, a teller of other stories, or an amalgamation, an amalgamation of your own experiences, or do you create something completely? Uh, fictional, or, or is there a sort of a documentarian in you? Where do you get that final product? Is it a combination of things, or how do you see yourself? Would you see yourself in the future, perhaps, as something like um, Herzog doing documentaries? Right now, you're doing dramas. Yeah, I would, it's a very good question. I yeah, I mostly do dramas. I write my own material. I would never say no to anything. You know, there's that adage: write what you know. I think that's true to a certain degree, but I find it's also very limiting if you write what you only know, you know, and the, the beautiful thing about being an artist is the exploration. So, um, I don't know, you know, it's, it's a very elusive thing where ideas come from, but I'm often seduced by an image, um, a, a theme, a character. Uh, it's hard to say, but once the, once the kernel is planted and the seed is planted, um, for me, creating is a lot about momentum, and when I have an idea, I, I, I just, I embrace it so much, and I kind of let it take me where it goes, you know, so I don't really, it's interesting, uh, I know it sounds very, um, uh, I don't know, this sounds sometimes very hokey, but I, there's a part of my brain that is not aware of what we're creating, you know what I mean, like there's a part of my brain that's very conscious of what I'm writing, but I think intuition is very underrated, so I kind of just, sometimes it just, you know, I, I kind of know what I'm saying after it's all done, right. you know? You're in the flow. Yeah, I'm in the flow, and then it's done, and you look at the screenplay, or you look at the right. film, and you're like, yeah, and it's like, wow. So when people say to you, what is your film about, or what are you trying to say? It's like, that's not, I don't know, that's, that's not for me to really say. It's you really know? like a Rorschach test. People see different yeah. things in the same movie. Yeah, absolutely. And it says a lot about a person, I think, if they do not get a really great movie that I think is great, and they don't, they can't stand it. It's like, kind of like a Rorschach test, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's a, what's a film that you saw recently that you like? You said you mentioned Drive. I said Drive the, the other night, and tonight we're going to see uh, again El Topo, yeah. Alejandro Todorovsky. Like you know, really, really like uh, arty, artistic. Uh, I think it needs to be visual for me. I'm not into CGI and effects and stuff. I no. need a story and interesting uh, things that are consciousness expanding. Yeah, totally. Just entertainment. I mean, you know, I could play you know play a game for entertainment. I no, you want so you're into the film that really kind of intellectually kind of provoke you, that kind of make you... Provocative. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Mind for sure. Mind yeah. Uh, tell me, what do you think of the um, current state of the movie business in Toronto? Do you feel fortunate to be based in Toronto right now with the quite a good reputation that we have as a filmmaking city? Yeah, you know, I think Toronto is a very sophisticated film city, no doubt about it. I mean, you just look at the number of festivals that, that happen every year. Um, the current state of filmmaking in the city expand that to this country more specifically um, yeah I mean it is what it is I mean you know funding is kind of always an issue I mean there's so much money to go around for so many filmmakers so tapping into that resource is always a challenge but um, it is what it is you know I mean I think the bigger problem in this country is not so much um, making films as getting people to see our films and that's a huge concern of mine anyway it's you know every Friday night a film comes out the little Canadian film, the small little Canadian film gets slotted in some small theater in the city, but it doesn't have a chance in hell because it's competing with the big conglomerate, which is Hollywood. And a lot of people gravitate toward these films, just fine. But where is the audience for our films? You know, if you ask, if you ask any Canadian to name them, to name five Canadian filmmakers, they probably wouldn't. I, I don't count on the masses for guidance. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't think they're relevant. It's, his, it's history. It's, it's yeah. the future that will dictate. Hmm. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> I have. What about your upcoming projects, Emmanuel? Are you working on anything in your mind? Are you, are you formulating a, a, a new story to tell? Anything I'm actually, that works right now? Yeah, I have a couple of features out. I'm actually, I've been in development for what seems to be eternity, but I'm actually hoping all goes well if we'll be shooting my first feature film in the fall of 2012. So that's in about, you know, eight, nine months or so. So I'm very excited about that. I've been working on it for a long, long time. It's a